formula, different recipe, a different beer in each one. And it's, it's indicated by these sheets here. That's the fermentation schedule. This is the proof schedule. So you can see this is River West Stein that's in this beer. So I wanted to show you the bubbling here because that represents the next step. And that is when we add the yeast to the wort. So we have the hop wort that we rapidly cool it down. That we rapidly cool down. Pumping into these vessels here, for example, back at the beginning there, the bow tank. We then add the fourth ingredient, which is the yeast. And what the yeast is at this stage is nothing more than a dormant fungus. Sounds good, right? But it intermingles with the fermentable sugars that were created back in the mashing process. And this brings the yeast alive. It activates the yeast. And the first thing the yeast wants to do after it becomes active is make other little yeast cells. So it starts going through a period of asexual reproduction. It starts budding off, and a byproduct of this asexual reproduction, folks, is CO2 and alcohol. And it's at this point then that the wort finally becomes beer. Now after about two weeks, the yeast has consumed all the fermentable sugars that are in the solution. There's nothing left to keep them going, and they then settle on the bottom of the tank. Now that's a step called flocculation, when that occurs. And I know i got to be careful how to pronounce that word, especially when I'm drinking all day. But what flocculation is, is the sedimentation of a particulate out of a solution. I like to say it's the asexual equivalent of having a cigarette rolling over and falling asleep. They're done reproducing and they go dormant. We then transfer the beer from this side of the room over to the other, which would be the equivalent of taking it from the bow tank into the Larry tank. 